Hey guys, it's Alexis and welcome back to my channel. I am so beyond excited for today's video because I had the pleasure of interviewing Zara Therese, who's the founder of the company Therese. I just wanted to preface this video by saying that it was, this interview was filmed way before COVID-19 and the outbreak was started. I've been quarantining at home for the past month, but this interview was just so special to me that I wanted to share it with you all. Zara is such an impressive person. She's an entrepreneur, she's a wife and a mom. I learned so much from from her when I sat down and talked to her and I really think that you guys will too so we started out the day and she gave me a tour of her office which was one of the coolest places I think I've ever been so I can't wait for you guys to check it out so without further ado let's just get into it this is our snack wall oh my god love that it is my design room oh so cool all right so are these like inspo pieces or? Um, maybe some things that we're working on. Oh, awesome. Hi, it's Daniela. Hello. Mariana, I sit here. This is in the design area. So we, I like to be out with everybody. Wait, is that your puppy? That is what, yeah, those are my three. Oh my goodness. See? They are so precious. Yeah, they're, they're pretty great. Here's what we we're talking about. <gasps> oh my goodness. That's awesome. Allie likes to have it there. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, here we do samples and different things, um, patterns, and then I'll take you quickly to the other side. And upstairs we have a roof. Oh my god, awesome. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Atlantic Beach, super intimate community, just full of honest, genuine, truly fantastic people. How old were you when you started uh, Therese and where were you working before? So I graduated from the University of Michigan. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I ended up working for um, interning for a company called Marquee Jet. I interned for them in their marketing department throughout college. And then Kenny um, and Jesse end up hiring me right after college to work for their subsidiary company called MGX Lab. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself um, creating logos and websites and Wikipedia pages for people like Tom Brady and the Jonas Brothers, Muhammad Ali. And um, I, di I didn't go to school for this, but I taught myself Final Cut. I taught myself, you know, and then I had other mentors there that helped teach me like Photoshop and I would just grab as much as possible. Right before my freshman year of college, um, I had a really traumatic event happen in my life. So I was 17 years old um, and my boyfriend who um, I was totally in love with, he was amazing, he ended up passing away. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, um, so he passed away trying to save his best friend from drowning and four of them drowned. Um, and so I didn't even know if I was going to go to college. Mm -hmm. It was a very, you know, when I think about it now, the, the experience is very jolting. You, mm -hmm. in one second, go from, you know, being footloose and fancy free and living and, you know, seeing, thinking that you're invincible. Yeah. And then you learn about life way too young and in an instant and, um, your whole world starts spinning in circles and circles and circles. Yeah. When I went to college, um, I ended up going uh, because I had an incredible support system from my family. Mm -hmm. And it was the best thing that happened to me because I found that um, good people and good connections um, is what life's all about. But I knew that I wanted to do something that was really purely good that made me happy. So and that can make other people happy as well because that is what life is about. It's about this, it's about us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're meeting right now for the first time and we are now connected for life. For sure. So it's interesting. Even if we never speak again, we still made an impact on each other's lives. Mm -hmm. When I was working for MGX Lab, I I was like, okay, what is it what is going to be my outlet? What can I possibly do? And so I found myself at a leather handbag store in the West Village. I was making a leather, um, what is it, like a leather mat for a vitrine. A vitrine is a, a display case. And there was a sign in there that said like, 
customize your own leather handbag. I was like, would you be able to make a hundred of them? And he said, sure. Um, he said, I said, would you be able to make a thousand of them? And he looked at me and he's like, uh, but sure, you know, like whatever. So I thought about it and I said, you know, this could be a great outlet. And my mom said, you're 22, now is the time you're gonna do it now. 100%. So that is when I started um, Zara Therese Handbags out of my parents' basement in the summer of 2008, right before the recession, like a day before the recession. Wow. <laughs> so it was a horrible time to start a company. So what was the most challenging thing about starting your company, especially going from handbags to what it is today? As I had mentioned before, you know, I started during the recession, so it wasn't easy to sell or create a brand out of leather handbags that were, you know, a few hundred dollar price point. That's not what people were looking for. And my parents were making uh, dresses at the time. They had a company called Holly World. And so I I took the linings out and I started selling, like making pencil cases to make money um, just so that I could keep the operations going. I found myself at a trade show where I really put a lot of work into my leather handbag uh, collection and these excess lining pencil cases I ended up like throwing into a basket in the middle of the table. Normally people just walk past you, but at this one trade show I ended up having Neiman Marcus urban outfitters and a Japanese distributor come by. Wow. Um, but they didn't come for my handbag collection. They saw this bright light that was in the middle of my booth, which was the, my linings made out of pencil cases. And they're like, this Zara, this is what it is. And so I started to push the prints and put them forward and then kept going and moving. And because they were in spandex, it easily, you know, it easily, um, organically went into leggings it was the same material but very quickly as soon as i shipped my first um which were my galaxy leggings and i started with oh kids God. i owned those galaxy leggings if you were like a 12 year old girl at the time yep. like i was and you didn't own those galaxy leggings like you had <laughs> to find a way to get yeah, a pair it was it probably is the first time that a brand really took off in kids and girls before it did women. And what I did is I officially launched our women's with SoulCycle um, in 2014 and showed how prints could really push um, the fashion envelope and make you feel super good at the same time. When you were 29 in 2015, you were featured in Forbes 30 Under 30, which is a huge accomplishment. So how- It's framed. Really? Yeah. Oh, you have to show it to me. Yeah. So how did that impact the trajectory of your career? What did it feel like? You need all the details. So the day that that came out, um, I lit we were in our other office on 8th Avenue and 38th Street, which is like in the heart of Garment Center. So I literally said to everybody in the team, I said, okay, we're done, we made it. Before that came out, I looked at it and I, ah, that's, that's like really all I wanted. I really wanted that recognition and it shouldn't be this way. I shouldn't Agreed. need that type of recognition in order for people to listen to what I have to say. Um, and it feels great. It feels nice. It didn't change my business in any sort of way. I think what it did is made me part of a really unique group of individuals um, who are probably more worthy than I am oh, of, no, of that, so but, but I, um, I was very appreciative. I'm still very much appreciative of it. You obviously have so much going on with being a mom, running a business. I want to know like what a typical day looks like for you. Just like walk <laughs> me through it. I know it could be, I, sure. I know it's probably different every day, yeah. but like, um, like what you do for like breakfast, like in the morning, like I think so I, I don't eat breakfast. You're not a breakfast person? I love breakfast. Don't get me wrong. I love I breakfast. Love breakfast and too. so, so now my mornings are a little bit different. Um, so I just had, I just had a baby. We still have a nurse that's taking care of her. So that's really great. <laughs> and I have to balance three kids in the morning and I also have to get myself together and up. And I have this really big thing now about my face. I like to put on my duty face masks in the morning, which are a 10 minute face mask. So what I've been doing is I wake up, put on my duty mask, pump at the same time, go get the kids, go make sure that everybody's okay, ready to go to school, wash off my face, get myself dressed while they're eating breakfast, 
um, make sure the baby's okay and maybe baby's fed and then <laughs> um, take my daughter who's four and my son that's two and a half um, out to school sit and we talk and we go through what's gonna happen that day and what's gonna happen later that day and um, go through drop off and then I usually come straight here or straight to some sort of meeting that I have to do and it's either a meeting that has to do with Therese and I'm also very much involved in the kids schools so I will either go to a meeting straight for Therese or I will do a meeting right away for school and auction chair of course I, I oh don't my God, how do you think <laughs> I know that is... I live on my calendar so what kind of happens after all those meetings in the morning uh, then we have more meetings and I'll have lunch at some point what do you um, like to do for oh lunch? I forgot to bring my lunch oh no so what's the plan do you order in I guess I'll order in do I you... forgot my lunch today <laughs> <laughs> So Usually funny. I bring it. I just thought about it. I forgot a lot of things this morning. There's different meetings all throughout the day. The hardest part is to find time to sit and go through my emails. That is really the hardest part because what I like to do is, um, and depending, every single day is, is different. So like Fridays, um, David and I make sure that we're home and we all have dinner together as a family just That's us awesome. so we make sure that we do that I try to do that as much as I possibly can so what do you think has been like the most rewarding part of your business so far in like your whole career um meeting people being able to meet all kinds of individuals with the most extraordinary most extraordinary talents so you obviously have a big team so what do you look for when you're hiring someone if you want to be here be here because you believe in what we're doing and you believe in the story that we are telling in our, in our mission. Because there are so many opportunities out there and everybody deserves happiness. They deserve to be part of some place that they believe in and belong in. So I'm gonna be going to college next year. Going back to if you're like 18, 19, 17 years old, you are about to go to college what advice would you give your, your younger self? Something that I say a lot that somebody once said to me, um, and they said, uh, time is your friend. But what it really means is that as time goes on, um, things get softer and you gain more experience. And so when I was that age, I wish that I fully understood that if I wasn't able to do everything right then and there, it's okay. It's really okay. And listen, I'm gonna say this to you and you're not even you're you're not even going to agree with it because I know what you're feeling because you wanna do it and you wanna do it now and you wanna be, you know, respected now and become a big everything right now. And that would be amazing. And that does happen for people. But if it doesn't, that's okay too. Yeah. Life will play out how it's meant to play out and Totally. Yeah. But you also are the creator of your own destiny. For sure. So there's one thing, you can't wait for something to happen. So it's a little, so time is your friend, but you also can't wait for it to happen. Yeah. You have to get the ball rolling, put your feet in the door, um, get it going, but realize then that it takes time. What do you see for the future of Therese? Like the next five years or 10 years? Like what do you see the brand, the trajectory, or what do you see it looking um, like? Right now we're working on this year and um, trying for the first time to tell our own story. So this is my favorite part of the interview. Oh, We're good. doing a lightning round. Oh, where great. I'm gonna ask you like a bunch of rapid fire questions and you're just gonna give me like the first thing oh, yeah, that comes to mind. Yeah, okay. no, I didn't send you these. So <coughs> All right, I'm ready. Guys. Okay, ready? Yeah. Um, fancy or casual? Fancy. Okay. Salty or sweet? Salty. Color or neutral? Color. Yeah, for sure. Um, beach trip or ski trip? Beach trip. I'm the same way. <laughs> um, uptown or downtown? Downtown. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for sitting thank down you. with me. Thanks this was Alexis. so much fun. Again, I'm so proud of you for doing oh, this. Thank it's you awesome. so much. It's really a pleasure to have you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you had as much fun as I did learning all about Zara and her company and her journey. Make sure you like and subscribe and feel free if you wanna shop any Therese like I'm wearing right now, click the link in the description. And if you wanna follow me more, follow me on Instagram and at TikTok at It's By Alexis. I love you guys and I'll see you back in my next video.